Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new Hissing Update style video. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I'm not even gonna take that out. That's not even gonna be a Patreon exclusive. You guys can just see what just happened. Hi, how are you doing? I'm death. So I'm just gonna address the gout in the room, me. Um, I'm very sick. I've been sick for the past week. Well, just it's kind of just over a week now. Um, it's It's been a lot. So I apologize if I am a bit let. Obviously I'm not gonna be as energetic as normal. Um, I'm really bunged up. I know I, my voice probably sounds a little bit weird. Um, it's not what you're thinking. It's not that. It's just the normal flu that people get this time of year. We kind of forget that that still exists. It has knocked me out a bit. So I apologize that this video is a bit a few days later than it would normally be. But I basically haven't been able to get out of bed. I've just been like lying down going, I'm going to die. So I want to come on today and talk about a thing that I have done recently, a new modification I have been, well actually I say recently, I've been doing this for nine months. It's taken me a long time to get where I am now. And that is I have finished stretching my left conch piercing here all the way up to eight millimeters. Now, can I just say the process of doing this has been an absolute nightmare. It's long, it's drawn out. Stretching cartilage is Oh, it is a ball game that is, you know, you really have to be fully invested to do this. So today I want to talk about my process, how I did it, the healing process, all the kind of stuff. I also want to talk about something that uh, went kind of wrong. It wasn't the best uh, timing situation and some problems I had. I'll put a photo here, it's just kind of easier. This is what my ear looks like now. It's, I absolutely love it. I'm super, super happy with it. So I originally got it pierced in 2010 at a 1.6 millimeter. I think that's 14 gauge. I, I always forget the gauges again. We do millimeters here, so it, they, the gauges don't stick in my mind. I got it done, yeah, 2010, longer time ago. And then in 2017, uh, I got it punched through at six millimeters. Now, six millimeters was this one here. Now, I got this, yes, yeah, so I got this one done in 2017. It was, it's quite small now comparing the two together. Like, again, it's kind of hard to see from here, but like comparing the two together, like this is actually really small now. I did six millimeters because that was the only size that my uh, piercing shop was doing at the time. And also because it was like a brand new modification, it's quite extreme. I didn't really know how big to go. Cause I was like, I don't know what it was gonna look like. So I kind of just went for six. About a year after I was kind of like, oh, I do wish I went a little bit bigger just because I do have quite big ears anyway. I was like, oh, I do kind of wish I went to an eight beforehand. However, laws have changed in this country. You can't actually get dermal punches here anywhere. Uh, with the whole Dr. Evil scandal that happened a few years ago, it was actually quite soon after I got my punch done, the laws changed. So like a lot of these sort of more extreme side of bottom modification became like really illegal. And even things that weren't illegal before then got crossed over to the illegal side. So unfortunately, dermal punches aren't really something you can really get done now. Unfortunately, I had to resort to stretching, but I put it off so long. I did a lot of research, a lot of, lot of and I say when I say a lot of research, I did a, a lot of research. I also spoke to a few friends who had done it, and of course, at this point, I know uh, like I know a lot of like online piercers and online uh, modders and stuff who have done a lot of this stuff. So I asked for advice. I got a lot of people telling me what like you know what you can and can't do. So of course, one of the most common stretching things that you would normally see is tapers. So it's just like you know uh, this is just like a metal one, but it's a. Uh, starts off thin at the, the front, you put the put it through the piercing, slowly push it through, and then it just kind of stretches up to the next size. Very common, I'm sure most people on this video know this already. I didn't want to use this method, and a lot of people said not to use this method with cartilage because of how, you know, cartilage doesn't stretch. It's not like something, you know, with, with, a, with a piece of skin or like anything, like it's all stretchy, like you can pull in stuff. So if you're stretching your lip, stretching like your ear or something, like your like lobe, of course it has give. So doing tapers aren't incredibly damaging, whatever. Obviously when you get to larger sizes, you can use weights and things. Tapers only really go up to a certain size anyway. I think after you get past like eight, it's probably better to maybe slightly use different methods anyway. But for me, I've always, always loved the taping method. It's how I got this one to a size eight myself. And of course, this is how I got to my conch to an eight. So this is like this like piercing stretching tape. I actually don't remember what brand this is. I just got this in 2017. 
I've had it for a long time now, but I don't remember what brand it was. I just bought it on the internet. It's this really, really thin tape. It's really, really thin. I couldn't tell you how thin it is. It's like micro thin. Now, obviously, you wouldn't really use this much for the first one, but I'm just for demonstration reasons. Um, and then you get your plug. It's kind of difficult to see. So you get the plug and you kind of just put it in the tape like that. So then if you see, it's like wrapped around the plug. So the tape is now around the plug. There's no sticky tape or anything. It just kind of sticks to itself. This is just for demonstration purposes. It looks a lot neater. It's not, it's like it's hard to do. Trying to do it like this with a microphone and the camera, it's very difficult. In reality, it's a lot easier to do it. You would only do one at a time. So you would, you would get the tape, just do one loop around it, cut it and then hold it down. And then you put it into your ear. Because it is so thin, this stretches very, very slowly. So it shouldn't be too painful. Um, there might be some resistance because obviously it is cartilage, but it won't be very much at all. Again, because it's such a tiny, 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 tiny jump that I've always preferred this method. I find it's a lot smoother. It's less painful. You're basically like elongating a stretch over like two weeks rather than like a day. Do one wrap the first day, keep it maybe in for two days. And then you do like, you take this off, get another set and then like do two loops, leave that a couple days, take it off and then do three loops and eventually try the next size up. It's kind of difficult to exactly know when it's big enough to get the next one in because you know, it's hard to tell. My biggest telling was I would get like the next size and before I change the tape, I would just be like, is it fitting inside? If it still fits inside easily, then do another loop. If it doesn't really fit in the next plug, easily then you're like well maybe you can try it so just get the next ne get the get like the next plug and just kind of like put it over the hole don't push it in and just feel if there's any like any real resistance if it still feels a little like doesn't does not like really going in then just do like another loop don't try to force it in because that just defeats the purpose of doing this just have it ever so ever so slight slight bit of pressure and if it still doesn't feel like it's going in nicely then do another loop i should also state as well the best time to do this which is when i was doing it as well is after having a shower have some hot water you know wash your ears massage the area it, it just makes the process better easier and smoother so the first jump from six millimeters to seven took me about two weeks i want to say my ear did swell up a little bit after like after the time of stretching and it was a little bit painful it was like throbbing for a few days but it wasn't that bad if you are prone to keloids i would say do not stretch your cartilage. Stay away from like dermal punches and all that stuff together. If you've got, if you like, if you suffer from keloids, like this is a modification that you probably shouldn't get. So I got the seven in. It was okay. It was, it was, yeah, it was a little bit uncomfortable for the first few days. I couldn't sleep on that side. Now, the thing is, it's very different to like getting a piercing in your rim of your ear or something, but because it's like in the center, the whole of your ear is kind of hurting. So, you know, any pressure towards any part, it's, you know, you can feel it. So, it's definitely something that takes a little bit of time to get used to and it was kind of painful but it healed now when you stretch cartilage piercings you have to wait a lot longer between doing the next size when you have like an earlobe earlobe stretch or whatever four to five weeks you can probably then get to the next one in cartilage times it's like four months it's not four weeks four months cut to two weeks ago i was like right i'm now gonna start stretching my conch to eight millimeters, which is at now. So at this point, it had almost been nine months since I like, stretched it up to seven. So I got my seven plug here. Um, seven, seven millimeter plugs are really hard to find. It was really hard to find this one because normally like, the jump goes from like six to eight, which I don't really understand why it goes one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And then all of a sudden it's like eight, 10, 12. I don't understand why it double jumps. So I got my seven, did the one loop, put it in, did the two loops, put it in and it was going fine. It wasn't painful this time compared to what it was the last time. I was like, oh, okay. My ears obviously settled down at this point. Now, of course, I sudden, my body suddenly decides, you know what? I think it's time to get the flu. <laughs> I just want to give you guys a heads up and a warning. Never ever do body modification when you are sick. Never. In my defense, when I first started stretching my ear to the, you know, to the, to the eight, I was absolutely fine. There was no sign of me being sick or whatever. So by the time I started actually getting sick, I was at the stage where eight plug that I've got on my ear now was able to go in. But I'm gonna just like finish it off now. There's no point me going all this time because obviously it's not a nice process. It's not comfortable. And I was like, well, I'm not gonna go through all this, take it all off and then do it again in like two months time because you'd have to let your ear settle down again. You can't like just suddenly do it again two days later or like after you've like got better from your sickness because you, your cartilage will react badly. So I was like, 
I'm just gonna have to do it now. I put the eight in. It was a little bit tight, but it was fine. Like, it, you know, no different than the first time when I got the seven in. I'm not gonna lie, the last week has been hell. <laughs> Now, obviously, as you can probably tell throughout this video, I'm not the wellest. Now, this is the be the good side of me being sick. I was a lot worse. My ear reacted quite badly. Now, it had swelled up quite a lot. It's still a tiny bit smaller now, but it's not so bad now. But the problem was, because my body was trying to fight the flu, it almost like it had to pick between which one to do. You know, your body only has a certain amount of, you know, an energy dedicated, you know, stuff that they can put to specific parts of the body to heal and things which is why they say you know don't get more than three piercings at once because your body finds it really hard to heal so the fact that my body was like full of the flu trying to fight it, and then this happened it was like panic 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 so my ear was really painful it like swelled up um it was like throbbing when i first got it punched through in 2017 this is kind of what it was like and i was like it's obviously just because I'm sick, it's kind of struggling. Because I'm well aware of how my body kind of reacts to some of these things, I knew it was gonna be fine, but it was just very throbbing. Like for the, the past few days, it was like constantly. And I think what my body was doing was not fighting the flu as much now. And it was just going to the ear because this felt like a more uh, pressing issue that needed to happen because it was like sudden instant. Like after like four days of it really hurting, it was like a switch went off and it stopped throbbing. And then instantly my body was like, right, time to hurt, time to ache, time to make you like die. So like then my body was went into like overdrive trying to fight the flu. But of course then the symptoms, all the flu symptoms really came out. So I was like, my body was hurting. My, I could barely breathe. My throat was like, Ugh. don't ever get modifications when you are sick. Like again, in my defense, I wasn't actually that sick when I kind of started to do it because I had the flu and I've not been able to sleep properly and all that stuff. Adding this to it, like I do, I, this just made it even worse to deal with the flu because I was like, I can't lean on that side now. I have to stay on this side. But sometimes like then this half of your face gets blocked if you lie too far on that side. So you need to go on that side, but I couldn't go on that. It's just been a fucking nightmare. However, it has been two weeks now. Um, I'm starting to feel better. It's, <laughs> it's, I mean, I'm still coughing. I've still got like a sore throat, slight sore throat and I'm really bunged up, but like my energy level is kind of coming back now, which is nice. I'm actually sleeping again. Good thing as well. My ear has now settled down, which is nice. It's not hurting anymore. It's absolutely fine. I'm able to wash it and clean it properly. And like, you know, it's not painful. If I put too much pressure on it, obviously it's painful, but in general, it's actually okay. The redness has kind of gone now. It's not really red anymore. For a few days, it was really red. I am super, 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 super happy with how it looks. This is just what I wanted. I am so happy. Um, and I'm glad that the, the size of it is big, like very different now. Pain-wise, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. Like obviously when you do any modification, it's, it's not nice. It's never gone, oh, that's a nice feeling. But stretching earlobes is uncomfortable, but it's not like painful if it's really painful then you're doing something wrong however as i said though when you stretch cartilage it is gonna be a you're gonna feel it you're gonna feel it no matter how slow you go you're gonna feel it you are you know trying to stretch something that really does not want to stretch cartilage doesn't have like any give whatsoever so just be warned it's not a nice game it, your ear will probably swell it's probably gonna be throbbing it's gonna hurt for a little bit like you just have to be very careful. I've got quite large ears, so I don't need to worry about this next thing. But just a little warning as well, anyone who does want dermal punches in their ears or something, they can cause loss of hearing. They can cause your ear to collapse. Obviously you're taking away a big chunk of your ear. So, you know, they, they can cause these things. I've never had any of these issues whatsoever. So I'm obviously a lucky one, but just know that, that there are these risks that go along with it. But of course for me, I was just, you know, I've made sure I did enough research to know that it wouldn't really affect me because again i do have larger ears and everyone else that i did ask who had done this kind of stretching all said that it was kind of painful for them um one of my friends said that they had a throbbing pain for like two weeks so unfortunately i feel like that's just like a normal thing i like i i found it quite difficult to find like what the after effects a lot of this would be on the internet like all these articles were just like this is how you do it and none of them really had like much after effects like what was it like a week after was it really painful so i'm glad that my like some of friends and like online people i know was there to help me i would always say anyway if you're going to do this consult your body piercer anyway and ask them for their advice be patient do not skip sizes 
and just be very careful. Like, don't, honestly, guys, don't, don't stretch with tapers. Like, I just, I, it, it's, I, I honestly, it's too much for your ear to jump. Like, with a cartilage, it's too much. It's too fast that you'll just split your ear open. Like, I just, I can't. Just don't, I, don't use tapers and cartilage. Like, I would just please use the tape method. Like, I, it's my preferred method. It's not, you know, it's not gonna be for everyone, but it's just, I, I, the idea of jumping to like six to seven and then seven to eight in one go is just, it's terrifying. So that has been my experience with stretching cartilage. <sighs> I'm there now. Will I go any bigger? Probably not. I'm very happy with this. Will I get another punch maybe at some point? If the laws change, yes, but at the moment I can't. Uh, but I, I was always thinking about maybe getting another punch on my flat here. Who knows, Gail? But I am very, very happy with how my ear has turned out. I love it. I absolutely love this. I am so, so happy. It's a long process, but I was dedicated and I really wanted it done. I'm gonna make a video about this, but I was also using the aspirin method to de-swell the piercing. I'm gonna make a, like an entire, entirely different video about the aspirin method, but that's a really good way of like getting piercings to de-swell. I'm gonna make a video about that very soon. I hope you like it. I'm really happy. I do hope you're all doing well. I know this video is not as like interesting as my normal ones, but you know, I, sometimes I want to give piercing updates and do, the, you know, methods and how I did it. But uh, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell. There'll be another piercing reaction coming up next. If you're part of my Twitch family, I apologize. I've not been streaming this week. I'll be back streaming next week. A massive shout out to my lovely patrons whose names you can see on the side here. And an extra special shout out to my top tier patrons. Alexander Shaw, Amanda Bibby, Aurora666, Bethard, Bootershot93, Brenna, Cassie H, Kaz.Thom, Shell Herman, Chris Williams, Colin Pemberton, Crafty Leaks, Dark Angel666, Dan Anita, Heather Prissy, I.E. At... Kat, Caitlin Wright, Kat L, Kelly Bowser, Chloe Louise, Robin Scott, Sam Perfect, Savannah Trutens, Sierra Tornabunny, Steffi Tech, and Sus Mac. Thank you for being my top tier patrons. You guys are incredible. Obviously, eh? there's a link down below if you'd like to go to my Patreon. <sighs> God, anyway, I'm gonna go. I need to go, go to sleep for an hour. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. It's like really crackly. I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe I fell off my bloody chair. <laughs>